Hi, this is Pete Gary from Boca Voice. Welcome to Factor Fiction Friday. Today, we're fortunate enough to have Scott Singer, one of the council members from Boca Raton. Scott, thank you for joining us. Peter, thanks so much for having me. Now, Scott is running for city council. He's actually an incumbent, and we want to thank you for joining us today. And Scott, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, it's been my great honor to serve on the city council for nearly three years. Uh, I'm a South Florida native, father of two, small business owner, lawyer, uh, but all of those great honors uh, have their place. Serving the residents of Boca Raton the last three years has been a great honor, a privilege. I'm proud of the record of what we've been able to accomplish, and I'm eager to do a great deal more. That's why I'm asking residents for their support in the March election. Now, Scott, one of the things that really intrigued me about you is that you've done these town hall meetings, and, and I got to tell you, I, I've, I've been to a few of them, and I've truly enjoyed them. You do engage the residents quite often. And in those, you, you have lively debate. I mean, I got to tell you, some of the residents really do challenge both you and the rest of the residents as they get into that, those different topics that you bring in. What gave you the idea of having these town hall meetings? I started doing town hall meetings my first year in office. I just thought it was another means to reach out to residents to get them more involved for the betterment of our community. I try to reach out to residents in every way I can. Not everyone wants to take the time to go to a city council meeting. That's why I send out newsletters, electronic newsletters, do phone calls, go door to door, have coffee meetings, go to neighborhood associations. But I thought, let me have my own town halls. I'll bring the coffee, we'll start some conversation and hopefully get better understanding of the issues that affect us, but also where people have a concept of what's going on, have a better idea uh, of the other side of the issue. Uh, and gain greater understanding there, because that really can make our community even greater than what it is. Now, do you have one of these town hall meetings, do you think, that have been had better um, response than others, or has there been some that haven't had great response? What, what have you found that has kind of worked? I think they've all had great response, and I've tried different formats. The first one I held was probably the first town hall by meet member, town hall meeting by a council member in more than a decade. Wow. And we had 150 people in a room that could only hold 70. We literally couldn't get people in the parking lot. There was so much pent up interest in having a town hall. Since then, we've routinely gotten between, I'd say, 80 and 120 people. Uh, some of the formats, you know, the format usually is um, the first few were just trying to air out some feelings. So I was on the defensive for two hours, taking questions and really just trying to respond. The last few town halls, I've tried to articulate some different visions, some topics, whether it's long-range planning. My last town hall earlier this month was about five big ideas, where I presented five big ideas for the long-term future of Boca Raton and solicited feedback, and I thought we had some great commentary there. I did a visioning session on the waterfront, and actually next week, I'm pleased to announce Thursday, January 5th, I'm doing a new format, a telephone town hall. Wow. It'll be 7 p.m. We're going to have residents call in. You can stay at home. I'm not providing the coffee this time, but you can stay at home, talk about whatever issues, and we'll have an exchange that way. I'm looking forward to it. If you provide us the phone number, we'll provide it to our listeners, and they'll, uh, we'll put it up on screen for them so they can get the link. Be glad to do that as soon as I get it. So I will. Pete. Well, great. Yeah. We'll, we'll provide that to Boca Voice as well. As soon as we get it from Scott, we'll make sure that everybody has it, and we'll actually broadcast it live that day from Boca Voice, so you'll have it that day as well as a reminder. You, know, you brought up a good point. Sometimes the city council gets blamed for things that really aren't your fault. One just happened recently with this pentagram that went up in, um, um, over in the square. You know, you guys took a lot of flack for that um, at the beginning, and then a lot of information came out that it wasn't your fault. You know, you guys do take some flack from things coming out. How do you, you know, how do you take that? I mean, it, taking it on the chin sometimes got to be a little bit hard. It is. It's part of the job. It's an honor to represent people, and I know my heart's in the right place. I really try to do a great job for this community. Some people choose not to see it that way, but it's a very vocal few. We're all adults, and we all recognize that not everyone's going to agree with you. And I think the more we have conversation, the more people see that the work I'm trying to do, the work others are trying to do, I think they have a better understanding. We may disagree on policy. We may disagree on the direction on a particular vote. We may disagree on a series of votes, but I think Everyone who cares to get involved to the degree they do cares about the city. So let's harness that common goal to make things better. And I don't have to agree with anyone on any particular issue. I don't agree with myself 100% of the time. Every person changes their mind. That's fine. So as we go into 2017, this next um, few years you're going on, what are some of the things that you want to accomplish as you go on? What do you want the voters to know that you're going to work for for the next few years? 
I'd like to build on the great successes we've had. I feel we have a proven record of success, and I'm proud of some of the initiatives I've pushed. In the last three years on the City Council, we've kept taxes low. We've actually lowered them. We've grown jobs. We've cut red tape that hurts small businesses like the ones I am and uh, the ones I care about. We've preserved green space, added park space. I'm proud of an initiative I had that even though I'll be running for office, you won't see my sign or anyone else's in the, can't, in the medians of the roads. So our city doesn't look littered like so many other cities did when we pride ourselves on our look. Um, but we have a great deal to go. We need more innovative trans traffic, transportation, and uh, mobility solutions. I propose some, whether it's redirecting our roads, getting a traffic circulator, adding downtown parking. These are ideas that will have a take years to take hold. Some of them are more accomplishable in a few years, but I'm really looking ahead the next 30 years. We need to grow our job base. We need to capture the educational talent here. This city was built on a tradition of innovation and technology, and we have an opportunity with a great synergy of intellectual minds, resources from the hospital. FAU and Lynn, and great companies here to become a medical and innovation technology hub. That will help distinguish us over the next 30 years. We have all the built-in advantages, wonderful weather, affluent town, lowest crime in 40 years, low crime, high property values, lowest tax rate of any full service county and city in the county, uh, and great tax structure in Florida. We're naturally going to attract more jobs, but I want to attract the best jobs and the best talent. That's going to preserve our quality of life, keep our neighborhoods safe and livable. And we need to do some things now to set us on that course of success for the next 20 to 30 years. It's an exciting opportunity and one I think we'd like to build on our successes, and that's why I'm running again. So how do you see the city changing in regards to responding to some of these? The, do you see the rest of the city council aligning with these? Do you, you, know, you, ha you also have one open seat coming up. And so do you see the rest of the city council getting alongside of you with this? Or do you see some challenges there? Or what do you think? No, I think we're all dedicated to the long-term success of the city. We've had some productive conversations that are goal setting. I think it's just increasing the accountability and what we can get done now. It's been surprising to me how quickly almost three years in the city council has, done, has gone by. And I'm proud of what we've done, but I'd like to do a lot more. And I think the experience I've gained in the last three years is not just a testament to what we've been able to accomplish, but also propels us going forward what we can really get done the next couple of years. Well, that's great, Scott. I really appreciate that. What are some of the other things you'd like the voters to know as we get into this ready for this March election? And remember, it's a March election. You're not waiting to November, folks. This election comes out in March, and we want to activate you so that you do come out and vote in a local election. Nothing dictates better into what happens here in Boca Raton than you, the voter, getting out in March. We have so much more we can accomplish as a city, and I'm proud to have put forth a great agenda and a series of ideas to do that. We have grade A schools in our city, but our city is not the leader in education. I'd like it to be. Other cities have dedicated staff, direct funding for programs, and I think that's one opportunity that I've put forth an agenda to build on. I'm going to be releasing another detailed analysis of my big idea number two, which is what came out of my town hall last week, or excuse me, last month. Uh, it's about direct support for schools. We have a uh, population that we can address mental health because Florida is frankly one of the poorest states in mental health funding. Um, I've already spoken to educators and representatives of the school board about direct support for that. I think enhancing our schools helps attract jobs, helps improve the quality of life, helps maintain that educational talent that will be our educated workforce. Beyond other ideas, you know, the five big ideas talked about transportation, education, Tran transit solutions, um, innovation, and accountability. And I'm proud of what we've accomplished on all of those things, but we have a great deal more to do. And in terms more about me, I'm a family man. I'm proud to raise, have my two children born in Boca Raton, raise them here. This is where I want them to live out and hopefully raise their families someday. But the work for the next 30 years begins now, and it, I hope, want to continue that now through March and hopefully beyond. So, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. You know, and sometimes I, I know that being as council is a thankless job, and I do appreciate you coming on. I really do appreciate it. So thank you for joining us. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about you or the, the voters to know? Absolutely, Peter. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate this. The job can be thankless. Uh, the good deeds of the job and trying to do a job well are really thanks enough. Uh, and I'm proud to say, you know, a lot of residents have thanked you for the service. Uh, thank me for the service. Um, it's gratifying, but that's not really what drives me. It's the actual work. Uh, I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish over the last three years in keeping our community safe, livable, 
financially successful, and I want to build on those successes in the next three years. Uh, and that's why I'm running for city council again. I hope to earn the voters' support in March, and I do encourage everyone to vote. Our community can be so much greater with greater participation. Uh, it's disappointing as a free society that we get less than 15% turnout typically in municipal elections. But those are the issues that touch our lives the greatest. Fire, police, water, sewer, parks, educational, recreational opportunities. All of these come from the city of Boca Raton. I'm proud of what we've been able to do there, but we can do a lot more together. And that's really where I'd like to get people more involved. And I've outlined some great plans for what I'd like to do in the next three years and what I've done in the last three. And you can always find out more uh, on my website, singerforboca.com. I'm also on social media at Scott Singer USA. So please, get in touch with me. I'll have town halls. I'll be knocking on more doors as I've been doing since November. But you have a question, please direct it right to me. I'd love to talk to you anytime. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Factor Fiction Friday in the Book of Voice. Look forward to seeing you next week.